and welcome to the grand final of Mastermind with me, John Humphreys. The first of 96 contenders took their seats in the black chair way back in October of last year, and six of them survived to be here tonight. Each of them no doubt entirely confident that they will become the 2019 Mastermind champion. And tonight, their subjects are the history of the American wilderness, a series of novels set in the Second World War, a great Impressionist painter you may never have heard of, the most famous of all Welsh rebels, a brilliant theatre designer, and the funniest brothers of all time. No prize money at stake, of course, but they do get a prize, and it's rather beautiful. This glass bowl. The first one was made by Dennis Mann way back in 1972, and believe it or not, he is still making them. The rules remain pretty much the same, too. They each get two minutes for their specialist subjects and then two and a half for their general knowledge. So who will be the 2019 mastermind? Let's find out. Let's ask our first finalist to join us Please. And your name is? Dave Cowan. Your occupation? Retired Information Systems Architect. And your chosen subject? The films of the Marx Brothers. Well, the Marx Brothers were four brothers from New York. They use the stage names Groucho, Chico, Harpo and Zeppo. They started out as a, what the US call a vaudeville act, British called Music Hall, and they did that for about 20 years before they came to the movies when Talking Pictures first appear. And from then on they became major Hollywood comedians. I've always enjoyed the Marx Brothers films. They showed them on TV quite regularly in the 1970s when I was growing up. So it seemed natural to choose when I came to doing a Mastermind grand final subject. I'm here outside the Screenwriters Guild of America to have a look at the script for A Night at the Opera, which is one of the Marx Brothers' most successful film. Hello. Hi, I'm David. Hi. I'm nice Hillary. To nice to meet you. Welcome to the Writers Guild Library. Oh, thank you. Yes. I hear yeah. that you're quite knowledgeable about the Marx Brothers. They have a special yeah. artifact yeah. for you. Yes, I am indeed. Let me show it to you. Oh, wow, this is uh, looks an original copy, what, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just. I can never imagine sort of looking at something like this you know, in its original form. I, I think my favourite scene in this movie is the uh, contract scene because it's a Groucho and Chico at their best. Now here we are. That's, that's oh, you already time. found it, found yeah. It. yeah, yeah. <laughs> now pay particular attention to this first clause because it's most important. Well, it starts out with the party of the first part. It should be known in this contract as the party of the first part. How do you like that? That's pretty neat, eh? No, it's no good. <laughs> My favourite Knox Brothers film is Duck Soup. It's the one where they get in the most jokes per minute. If you can't get a taxi, you can leave in a half. If that's too soon, you can leave in a minute and a half. Well, Duck Soup has got a sort of plot, but it's quite threadbare, really. It's all a bit surreal. In fact, it probably mirrors the surrealist art movement at the time. I object. Even I object. Then I object too. Preparing for the grand final is quite a challenge. I've watched all the films again several times. I've read up a couple of biographies of the, of the brothers, uh, what there's available of about them, and just generally immerse myself in them as much as possible. I'm heading off to see uh, Bill Marx, who's the son of Harpo, and hopefully he's going to tell me a bit more about his father, any stories he can tell me about making the movies. OK, well, thank you very much. Here we go. These are all props from the uh, films, well, aren't they? Yeah. Well, all of these yeah. are props. Yeah. Uh, this is, believe it or not, 80 years old. Oh, it's an old cigar. <laughs> That's still, incredible. You know, I, be, but I, don't, I don't know. It'll probably fall apart. Well, oh, better in a film, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a particular favorite film that Brothers made? Yeah. The funniest, best picture yeah. was Duck Soup. Yeah. I don't think getting to the grand final compared to anything else I've ever done because it's a unique experience. If I did win, it would be fantastic because it's still a very small group of people who actually won the title. So to be added to them would be incredible. Two minutes starting now. Groucho Marx was known for his quick-witted insults, exaggerated eyebrows and elaborate character names. In a day at the races, he was known as Dr Hugo Z. What? Hackenbush. Yes, in Animal Crackers, what does Harpo steal from Roscoe Chandler, which had revealed Chandler's true identity as A.B. the Fishman? His birthmark. Yeah. In Monkey Business, an attendant on the ship asks Chico if there is anything that he would like before lunch. What does Chico reply? 
breakfast. Yes, in room service. What medical problem does Groucho say that he once faked to prolong his stay at the Plaza Hotel along with kidney trouble at the Astor? Measles. Gallstones. What is the occupation of the three famous bearded men whom Harpo Chico and Ricardo Baroni assume the identities of in A Night at the Opera? Aviators. Yep. In At the Circus, what crime has Harpo committed according to the wanted poster attached to the inside of his coat? Jaywalking. Yes. Who plays Jameson, the smartly dressed assistant at the deserted Hodel de Coconut, who falls asleep while managing the front desk? Zeppo marks. Yep. In Animal Crackers, for how long does Chico say he was once stuck playing the same piano piece because he'd forgotten how it ended? Three days. Yes. In monkey business, the Marx Brothers all try to bluff their way through passport control by pretending to be a famous entertainer. Which one? Roger Chevalier. Yes. Which item that gets sucked into a vacuum cleaner reveals Count Pfefferman's true identity as the Nazi Heinrich Stubel in A Night in Casablanca? It's toupee. Yes. What business name is written on the back of Harpo's surgical scrubs when he assists Groucho's examination of Mrs Upjohn in A Day at the Races? Fred's Autos. Joe's service station. Which famous poet does Groucho quote when he describes the beauty of Martha Phelps in The Big Store? Pass. In A Night in Casablanca, Groucho's character, Monsieur Ronald Cornblow, asks Beatrice Reiner to call him by another name because he's breaking it in for a friend. What name? A pass. What is the name of the character who falls out of a canoe while on a date with Professor Wagstaff, played by Groucho, in Horse Feathers? Connie Bailey. Yes. What does Groucho say Harpo's shoes resemble at the beginning of Go West? Well, I can tell you because we're out of time. Fungus, fungus. with buttons, yeah. Your other two passes, the name in A Night in Casablanca, the name of that character was Montgomery, and the famous poet whom Groucho quotes in the big store was Lord Byron. You have scored, Dave, ten points. And our next finalist, please. And your name is? Ian Orris. Your occupation? Management accountant. And your chosen subject? Owen Glindor and his revolt. I've always had a great admiration for Owen ever since I learned about him at school and it's an absolute honour to be studying him for the grand final of Mastermind. And today, we're going on a little tour of Wales so I can learn a little bit more about my subject. Owen Glyndwr was the first and last native prince of all of Wales. He, in 1400, declared himself as Prince of Wales at the age of 41. And for the next 10 years, he ran a successful military campaign against the English authorities. But most importantly, after the end of his revolt, he became the father of the Welsh nation. Today I'm at St Fagan's National Museum of History and I believe the curator's got some very special artefacts that they want to show me. So this is Owen's great seal. For me, this is really important because it actually signifies him changing, converting from being a rebel, capturing castles, to actually being a proper statesman. He's now signing documents, he's passing laws, he's now the voice of the Welsh nation. And this object here, this is a gilt bronze horse boss, which would have been attached to his harness. It's important because it is it's something he personally touched. There's very few artefacts which we know ex exist belong to Owen personally. In 2009, my wife encouraged me to enter Mastermind. I was fortunate enough to get to the semi-final. No passes, Ian Orris. 14 points. And immediately afterwards, I decided I wanted to carry on with my quizzing journey. Getting through the same final is a big thing for me, and it's been a, a really great experience. Behind me, you'll see the site of one of Owen's two great properties where he would have entertained his guests. And more importantly to me, this is the site where he made the, the life-changing and fateful decision in which to declare his revolt against the English crown. Wow, we're up here, you can absolutely see fantastic panoramic views here. And I think more importantly, you can see why Owen chose this place. This is a place where you can easily defend and see more than one enemy coming to you from different directions and still be able to make your escape. You can't have nerves in a grand final of Mastermind. It's the equivalent of like going up in a plane for a parachute jump. You basically, once you jump, you either have to pull the ripcord or you fall. 
I would really love to have been mastermind. I believe I've got the ability to do that. I've been a fan of the show since it was first broadcast many years back, and this would be a crowning glory, an absolute achievement for me. Owen Glyndwr in two minutes, starting now. Under which Welsh captain did Owen Glyndwr serve in the garrison at Berwick-upon-Tweed in 1384? Sir Gregory Sice. Yes. At which of his estates was Glyndwr proclaimed Prince of Wales on the 16th of September, 1400? Glyndwrdwy. Yes. Glyndwr is said to have raised a standard depicting a creature in gold on a white background before he made an unsuccessful attack on Carnarvon in November 1401. What creature? A dragon. Yes. A land dispute with one of Glyndwr's neighbours was the catalyst for the start of his Revolt and the neighbour who was captured in an ambush in 1402. Who was he? Reginald de Grey. Yes. Glyndur stormed a castle in 1401 and had the 60 surviving members of the garrison executed. Which castle? You Adna. Yes. Glyndur's forces won a major victory in a battle in June 1402, during which Edmund Mortimer was captured. What battle? Triglass. Correct. What word did he frequently use to refer to the English in his correspondence with the Scottish, Irish and French, often qualified with barbarians or barbarous? Leogria. Saxons. In 1403, Prince Henry of England burned Glyndura's house at Glyndavry and destroyed a house in Powys that is thought to have been his main residence. Which house? Sakharf. Yes. Henry IV's half-brother was granted Glyndura's estates after they were confiscated at the start of the revolt. What was his name? John Beaufort. Yes. Where in Powys did Glyndura convene his first parliament in 1404? Machanthef. Correct. What name was given to the agreement made between Glyndura, the Earl of Northumberland, and Edward Mortimer to divide England and Wales between them? Tripartite indenture. Yes. At which battle of 1405 was Glyndura's army defeated, his brother killed and his son captured? Puffmelin. Yes. A Welshman who was originally loyal to the English was killed by a cannonball while he defended Aberystwyth Castle for Glyndura in 1408. Who was he? William Grin, actress Lewid. Yes. Glyndura's wife, two daughters and three granddaughters were taken prisoner when a castle was surrendered to the English in early 1409. Which castle? Harlech. Yes. One of Glyndura's last recorded acts was in 1412 when he captured and ransomed a Welshman who had been accused of trying to murder him in 1404. Who was he? David Gam. David Gam is correct. Correct. Uh, no passes. Ian, you have scored 14 points. <laughs> and our next finalist, please. And your name is? Judith Lewis. Occupation? Psychiatrist. And your chosen subject? The Fortunes of War Novels by Olivia Manning. So here I am on the train heading into Bucharest. This is how the Pringles would have arrived at the beginning of the first chapter of The Fortunes of War. So The Fortunes of War is two trilogies that were written by an author called Olivia Manning. And they're almost semi-autobiographical in reflecting her time during the Second World War. They were dramatised, I think, in 1987. And I think because the lead characters are a young couple who'd only recently been married, and my husband and I had only recently been married, we got very much drawn into the series. Welcome to Bucharest! Taxis this way! Taxis. Well, I guess this is the way that Guy and Harriet Pringle would have come into Bucharest when they first arrived. There's some beautiful, imposing old buildings. It's a wide, elegant, I suppose, very central European boulevard. It's beautiful. I chose these books as my specialist subject because it gave me an opportunity to reread something that I enjoyed and seeing something, I suppose, of me and my husband in those two lead characters. He's very outgoing, very gregarious, very much like the like Guy Pringle, and his wife Harriet, more independent, less outgoing, but not lacking in confidence. And I think I saw myself as a little bit like her. Well, this is the Chiswiju Park, which is uh, an open area of parkland and woodland right in the heart of the city of Bucharest. And in the books, this is where the Pringles quite often came for a walk during decent weather. It's just fascinating to think that Olivia Manning herself was here round about the same time that she set her stories, that she'd have walked over these paths, probably stood on this bridge. Yeah, it's quite a special feeling to, to know that I'm in her footsteps. 
With the final coming up, I have really enjoyed rereading the books. I've made notes on them. I've made some flashcards. I've done my best to predict what kind of questions might be asked, but really all I can do is just hope that I know them well enough. I'm finding that being in Bucharest has really brought the books to life. This amazing Athene Palace is at the heart of some of the novels. It's given me a completely fresh pair of eyes. So coming into the hotel today and realizing that Olivia Manning had been here 70 odd years ago, kind of sends goosebumps down your spine. If I were to win, it would feel the most immense achievement. At the outset, I had thought that if the questions fell right for me, I stood a reasonable chance of getting into the semi-final, but I didn't expect to get any further. So it would feel something really very special if I were to walk away with the trophy. The fortunes of war in two minutes starting now. Which country do Guy and Harriet Pringle hear has been invaded by the Russian army shortly after they arrive in Bucharest at the start of the Great Fortune? Poland. Yes. What is the name of the professor whom Professor Inchcape arranges to fly to Bucharest to give a lecture on the development of English poetry? Lord Pinkrose. Yep. What disease does Harriet contract in the battle lost and won that requires her to stay at the American hospital in Cairo? Amoebic dysentery. Yes. The Englishman of noble Russian descent, Yakimov, plays Pandorus in Guy's production of a Shakespeare play. Which play? Troilus and Cressida. Correct. What is the name of the monstrously expensive scent Hugo Boulderstone instructs Simon to buy for Edwina Little from London's West End and which is delivered to her in Egypt in a diplomatic bag? Gardenia. Correct. Whom does Edwina marry in the sum of things, even though she has serious reservations about the match right up until her wedding day? Major Tony Brody. Yes. What is the name of the ship that Guy mistakenly believes Harriet is on when it sunk off Tanganyika by a German torpedo? He thinks she's been killed. Queen of Sparta. Correct. Simon is distressed to find he's been separated from his two friends in the opening passage of The Danger Tree. One is Codley. Who's the other? Trench. Yep. What is the name of the Romanian Prime Minister whose murder Guy and Harriet learn of while they are dining in a cafe? Kalinescu. Correct. In what building is Lord Pinkrose murdered in the battle lost and won? The Cairo Opera House. Yes, the Royal Opera House in Cairo. In which city does Harriet bump into Yakimov in the final chapter of The Spoilt City after she has flown there as turmoil grows in Bucharest? Athens. Yes, in Friends and Heroes, Guy discovers that no one is in charge of the school in Athens where the teachers, Toby Lush and Dubedat, are working because its nominal director is on sick leave. What is the director's name? Colin Grace. Yes, what is the make of Yakimov's beloved yellow car that he's forced to sell for 60,000 lei after he runs out of money in The Spoilt City? Hispano Suiza. Yes. What is the name of Alan Frewen's dog in Friends and Heroes? Alan uses him as an excuse not to leave Greece because if he did so, the dog would have to go into quarantine. Diocletian. Yes. What does Harriet want to visit on her first morning in Athens with Guy? But Guy says that he has to try to arrange a job interview instead. The Parthenon. Is correct. Judith, no passes. You have them all right and you have a score of 15 points. Next finalist, please. And your name is? Mark Grant. Your occupation? Accountant. And your chosen subject? The theatres of Frank Matcham. Frank Matcham was a theatre architect in late Victorian and Edwardian times. He designed between 75 and 120 theatres. He's probably the most prolific theatre designer that's ever lived. I chose Frank Matcham as a special subject for a couple of reasons. First of all, so I could learn more about him. I mean, I have a fairly busy life, and so if I go and mastermind, then I have to find out a lot about him. So it kind of justifies all the reading I do. But also, I like I like architecture as well as you know, the performing arts, uh, so it's kind of a happy combination of them. Yeah, so these are original plans and details of the Colosseum, probably done by, by Frank. It has his kind of name and details here, and they're kind of hand-drawn in ink. And you can see from this, these are like door handles that go down to the, the tiniest degree of detail. I've been reading a lot about Frank, as you can imagine, for this. Um, but it, it's, it's, 
This is actually his, his drawings, uh, something that he had. So this is just, just delightful to actually have something which he had himself. The first one we were asked one was a first ever quiz. I, mean, I did pub quizzes occasionally at work, but I'd never done a quiz before. Smart Grant, you have 16 points. I did well. And so the following year, I did Brain of Britain. And, and Brain of Britain was, a, was actually a similar journey. It took me three times to win that. Getting through the semi-final in this series uh, it was a huge, huge relief. It, it, is, it is a fairly stressful situation, but you, you know, before, but like it's designed to be stressful and, and it's part of the test. Uh, we're in a VNA archive and uh, this is a, a treasure trove. We have quite a few Matcham memorabilia here. For example, this is a photograph of the Colosseum as it was originally built. And here is the original King's Box. Stoll, who commissioned the theatre, didn't want Edward VII to have to walk from the entrance 15 yards to this box. Matcham made something called the King's Car, which was an ornate lounge which ran on a rail track in which Edward VII could sit on and could convey him the short distance to this box. Unfortunately, it broke down the first day. Um, Edward VII was a good sport, so he laughed himself silly and just got up and walked the rest of the way. Uh, but it was never used again. I've been to this stage before. I've been on Mastermind a number of times and I've done fairly well. I've been waiting for this for 12 years. Um, it's quite important for me not to fail again. Frank Matcham in two minutes, starting now. Which 1903 Matcham Theatre was sold to the BBC in 1953 and renamed BBC Television Theatre? Shepherd's Bush Empire. Yep. What French word is written on the pediment at Belfast Grand Opera House, also known as the Palace of Varieties? Grand Cirque. Yes, Cirque. In which West Yorkshire town was Matcham's Queen's Theatre and Opera House opened in 1900 to replace a similarly named theatre that has been pulled down because it was inadequate? Keighley. Yes, Keighley. Matcham took over his late father-in-law's architectural practice in 1878 and his first major task was completing the rebuilding of a London theatre that opened the following year. Which theatre? Elephant and Castle. Correct. The auditorium of the Granville Theatre, Walham Green, was entirely lined with a material that was easily washed. What was it? Dalton Ware. Yeah, Dalton Franz Tiles, yes. A gilded statue tops the dome of London's Victoria Palace Theatre. Who is it a statue of? Anna Pavlova. Yes. Which theatre in Islington did match and build in 1883 after the theatre on the site had been destroyed by fire, only to then rebuild it twice following further fires? It was later renamed the Empire. Grand Theatre, Islington. The Grand Theatre, yeah. By what name was the Harrogate Royal Hall known when it opened in 1903? The name the Royal Hall was adopted during the First World War because it was thought to be more patriotic. Kursal. Yes. What was the name of the head of the Portsmouth Theatres Company who commissioned Matcham to rebuild the Prince's Theatre in the town? Broughton. No, Broughton. Which of Matcham's theatres in north-west England has also been known as the National Theatre of Variety since 2006? Grand Theatre Blackpool. Yep. In which city did Matcham complete his first commission for the impresario Edward Moss in 1892? Edinburgh. Yep. Matcham modelled his facade to the London Palladium on an earlier attraction that had been on the site called the Corinthian what? Bazaar. Yep. Which friend and expert in fibrous plaster did Matcham often employ to do interior embellishment, including for the Hackney Empire in London? De Jong. Yep. What was the name of the water spectacular that formed part of the opening night of the Bristol Hippodrome in 1912, Matcham's last major theatre build? Tally Ho. No, the Sands of D. Mark, no passes. You have scored 12 points. <laughs> yeah. And our next finalist, please. And your name is? Helen O'Connell. Your occupation? Gardener. And your chosen subject? United States National Parks. I've longed to be here in Sequoia National Park since I was very young. It's quite emotional. It's, it's just even more beautiful than I thought it would be. <laughs> I've been fascinated by America's National Park since I was about seven years old and a relative gave me a book about the natural wonders of the world and from then on I just wanted to know more. 
The first national park was created over 150 years ago. That was Yellowstone. The president was Ulysses S. Grant, and he um, accepted that there was a need to protect spectacular areas for the American people to be able to enjoy. So I'm here at Foothills Visitor Centre in Sequoia to see some really fascinating historical artefacts to do with the park. I've no idea what they are, but I am looking forward to it. So here I have a piece of bark with a poem on. It commemorates the opening of the first road into the park in 1903. We sat in the redwoods shade after the road was made and let our lunch from boxes laid on shovel, pick and spade. It really sort of brings the park to life. It was the first road into the park and I can see people sitting down having their picnic and each being given one of these. I have felt quite a lot of pressure being in the final, but I think it's focused me and made me all the more determined to win. General Sherman is the most massive living organism on the, on the planet and just to see the sheer size of it is really making me feel quite excited. I don't know if anything compares to General Sherman. I could feel myself getting quite welled up inside. It's not just a lump of wood, it, it's actually alive, it's living. It's just so beautiful. <laughs> it really is. It really is. No, I never thought I'd actually get to see him. It'll be a real honour to sit in the mastermind chair and answer questions about the wonderful national parks in the USA. And winning the grand final for General Sherman would be the best thing ever. I'm sure he's with me all the way. Helen, two minutes on National Park starting now. The act that established Yellowstone as the world's first national park was signed by President Ulysses S. Grant on the 1st of March in which year? 1872. Yep. Which wetland area that covers one and a half million acres is home to endangered species such as the manatee, the Florida panther and the American crocodile? Everglades. Yep. Which naturalist born in Dunbar, Scotland in 1838 was instrumental in the founding of Yosemite National Park? John Muir. Yep. What name for the northern section of the Petrified Forest National Park derives from the many very variegated colours of the rocks found there. Painted desert. Yes, the dormant volcano Haleakula, meaning House of the Sun, gives its name to the national park where it is a central feature. On which Hawaiian island is Ma it located? Maui. Yes, what is the name of the vertical granite monolith that rises over 3,000 feet at the western entrance to Yosemite National Park? El Capitan. Yep, which park, located either side of the city of Tucson in Arizona, is named after the giant cactus that grows there? The plant is widely regarded as the symbol of the American West. Saguaro. Yes, what is the name of the basin at Death Valley National Park consisting of salt flats that is the lowest point in North America. Bad water. Yeah. The Mesa Verde National Park in Colorado is famous for the cliff dwellings of the ancient people who lived there for 700 years. Which people? Anasazi. Yes, the ancestral Puebloans. Which national park was established in 1978 and named after a Mormon pioneer who described it as a hell of a place to lose a cow? Bryce Canyon. Yeah. Which park in Alaska takes its name from its central mountain peak? The name translates as the high one. Denali. Yep. What popular viewing point at the Grand Canyon is named after the first director of the National Park Service? Mesa. Yes. The principal features of which park lie below the surface of the Chihuahuan Desert in the southwest of the country? Colorado. Carlsbad. What name for the valley in Alaska's Katmai National Park derives from the steaming fissures created after the eruption of Novorupta volcano in June 1912? Valley of the 10,000 Smokes. Yes, which park in Southern California takes its name from a plant that is a member of the Yucca family? Joshua Tree. Yes, Joshua Tree is correct. Helen, no passes, you have 14 points. <laughs> and our final finalist, please. Your name is? Hamish Cameron. Your occupation? Retired IT manager. And your chosen subject? The life and times of Mary Cassatt. Mary Cassatt is an American painter. 
She was brought up in a very upper class American family. Her family did not mind her going to painting academy, but she was not meant to become a painter. She was meant to marry into another rich family, have children and host dinner parties. But she rebelled against that and she knew she had to leave America. She went to Paris, she was absolutely determined to earn a living from painting. Here we are at the Comédie Française, where Mary would come many times with the famous impressionist Edgar Degas. But whereas Degas would paint the performers, Mary would paint the audience. Impressionist painters, to me, identify by fuzzy edges to their images, whereas Mary was not really like, like that. Her images were, were much more well-defined and exact. I chose Mary because I had an interest in the Impressionist paintings and I came across this name Mary Cassatt and wondered who she was and realised she was an American, an American woman who lived in a man's world and was really determined to make her own way. In the semi-final I made a mess of my specialist subject but fortunately I did enough by one point. Place 21 points, Hamish. I looked back on my quiz career and thought I would make the final of Mastermind twice. I would have said, don't be silly. I prepared for the final by getting books on Mary Cassatt, sitting down, reading them, taking notes, and just learn as much as you can. Here we are at 13th Avenue today, which was Mary's house for the latter part of her life. And now she had achieved much success and wasn't under the same stress as she was in her earlier life. Well, to win this series would, I think, be absolutely amazing and I would be absolutely flabbergasted. There are six of us there, but you never know what you get asked. No one knows everything, everyone knows something. So it all depends what they ask me. <laughs> Mary Cassatt, in two minutes, starting now, what was Cassatt's middle name, which she sometimes used as a pseudonym in exhibitions to avoid unwanted publicity? Stevenson. Yes. Cassatt's work was accepted by the Salon for the first time in 1868. What was the title of the painting that was exhibited? The Mandolin Player. Yes. What is the alternative title of one of Cassatt's paintings of a mother and child? It's derived from an object in the background that appears to create a halo around a boy's head. Oval mirror. Yep. What was the married surname of the American student Louisine Elder, whose friendship with Cassatt began in Paris in 1874? Havemeyer. Yes. Cassatt studied privately in Paris with an established artist who previously taught Manet because women weren't allowed to attend the École des Beaux-Arts. Who was he? Couture. Yes. One of Cassatt's best-known portraits, completed in 1878, shows her mother reading which newspaper? The Figaro. Yep. According to its title, Cassatt's 1879 painting of a woman at the theatre depicts the subject in a loge with what? A fan. A pearl necklace. An exhibition of which country's art held in 1890 at the École des Beaux-Arts inspired her to produce a series of ten colour prints that were shown the following year? Bass. What was the name of Cassatt's long-serving maid and housekeeper who inherited many of her works? Mathilde Valley. Yes. Which art dealer staged a major exhibition of her work at his Paris gallery in 1893? Girard Ruel. Yes. Cassatt painted a mural for the Women's Building at the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition in which American city? Chicago. Yep. What work that she painted in Antibes in 1893-4 to four is often said to be an homage to Manet. His 1874 painting of a similar subject was bought by the Havermeyers on Cassatt's recommendation. The boating part. Yes, what was the name of the chateau in Les Menilles Taribu, north of Paris, that she bought in 1894? She died there in 1926. For Fresne. Yes, Cassatt habitually declined prizes for her work, but did accept a prestigious award in 1904. Which one? Les Gens Yes, which New York gallery staged the 1915 Suffrage Loan Exhibition that featured works by Cassatt and Old Masters? Nodlers. Yes, the first full-length biography of Mary Cassatt by Achille Segal was published in 1913. What was his title? Mary Cassatt, a painter of modern women. No, painter of children and of mothers. One pass, Hamish, the exhibition held in 1890 was in Japan. Hamish, that one pass, you have scored 13 points.
So that finishes the end of the first round. What a round it has been. It is time to ask our finalists to join us again in the studio. And at this stage, of course, our six contenders do not know how each other has performed in the first round. So let's put them out of their misery and tell them. In sixth place, 10 points, Dave. Fifth place, 12 points, Mark. Fourth place, 13 points, Hamish. Joint second place, 14 points apiece, Ian and Helen. In the lead with 15 points, Judith. All of those long months of hard work come down to this, the general knowledge round. Two and a half minutes of questions each that will decide who is to be the nation's mastermind. And if there's a tie at the end of it, then the number of passes is taken into account and the contender with the fewer passes is the winner. And if they're tied on passes as well, there will have to be a tie break. So let us ask Dave to join us again, please. And you start, Dave, with ten points. Everything to play for. Two and a half minutes. General knowledge, starting now. Which of the great apes is the largest arboreal or tree-dwelling mammal? The gorilla. Orangutan. What is the English title of Schiller's 1785 poem, Andy Freuda? Pass. Which country house in Hertfordshire is the family seat of the Cecil family, the Marquises of Salisbury? Nebworth. Hatfield. What word meaning a fashion designer, especially of women's clothes, is derived from a French word meaning dressmaker? Couturier. Yes. What period of geological time is named after a region of the Western Urals and was the last of the Paleozoic era? Georgian. Permian. Which northern Indian state whose capital is Jaipur is the largest in terms of area? Rajasthan. Yes. What may be defined as a form of a language spoken in a particular geographical area distinguished by idiom, vocabulary and pronunciation? Dialect. Yes. English and black are species of what nut-bearing tree whose wood varies from dark brown to paler colours? It's used particularly for furniture and gun stocks. Ash. No. Walnut. The warden is a variety of what fruit it is hard and used for cooking and thought to have been developed by Cistercian monks in Bedfordshire around the 14th century. Apple. Pear. Yeah. St Laurentius became the second holder of an ecclesiastical post in England in about 604 AD. What post? Archbishop of Canterbury. Yes. In January 2018, Anya Shrubsoul became the first woman to be featured on the cover of what annual sporting publication? Wisdom. Yes. The founder of what former car-making company was created, Viscount Nuffield, in 1938? Morris. Yes, Morris Motors. Sirimavo Bandaranaika became the world's first female prime minister in 1960 in which Commonwealth country? Sri Lanka. Yes. In what Gilbert and Sullivan comic opera does the hero Strephon have a fairy for a mother? She is the opera's title character. Ayalanthi. Yes. Who provided the voices of J.P. Smold Gruntfutter, Grambling Sid Rumpo and Dr. Joe N. Ginsberg in the radio comedy series Around the Horn? Kenneth Williams. Yes, what is the name of the private detective created by J.K. Rowling, writing under the name Robert Galbraith? He first appears in the 2013 novel The Cuckoo's Calling. Common Strike. Yes, which English king was originally buried in Chertsey Abbey's Lady Chapel after his murder in 1471? Oh, uh, Henry VI. Yes, who was the songwriting partner of Hal David? The pair had consecutive number one songs in Britain in 1958 when Perry Como's Magic Moments replaced Michael Holliday's The Story of My Life. Bert Bacharach. Yes, which London Underground line was originally to have been called the Fleet Line? Its name was changed in 1977 to celebrate a royal event of that year. Jubilee Line. Jubilee Line is correct. You had just one pass. The English title of Schiller's 1785 poem, Andy Froda, Ode to Joy, yeah. which you knew, of course. Just that one pass, Dave, you now have a total of 23 points. <laughs> and now Mark again, please. And uh, Mark, you start out with 12 points. 23 the score to beat as it stands. Here we go. 
Which international insurance association gets its name from the coffee house in Lombard Street where ship owners and merchants met to transact business? Lloyds. Yep. Who was appointed Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army soon after the outbreak of the American War of Independence? Washington. Yes. What name is given to the technique of studying the annual growth rings of trees or timber in order to date past events? Dendrochronology. Yes. In what 2018 film does Rami Malek play Freddie Mercury, the lead singer of Queen? Rock me. Bohemian Rhapsody. Which Birmingham-born Rastafarian writer and dub poet's first collection of poems, Pen Rhythm, was published in 1980? Zephaniah. Yes. Orology is the study or description of what geographical features? Hills. Yeah, mountains. What word can mean a cloth used to wrap a corpse in or, in the plural, ropes in a sailing ship that run from the masthead to the sides to give the mast support? Sheets? Shroud. Who composed the music for the trio of ballets based on American folk music Billy the Kid, Rodeo and Appalachian Spring? Ben Copeland. Yes. Which playwright, the predecessor of Sophocles and Euripides, is the earliest of the Greek tragedians? Aeschylus. Yes. What martial art has a name that means gentle way? Its modern form was introduced in 1882 from the traditional techniques of jiu-jitsu. Karate. Judo. The Chatham Islands group in the South Pacific are part of a Commonwealth country. Which one? New Zealand. Yep. Who became only the fourth woman to hold a cabinet post when Harold Wilson appointed her the first Minister for Overseas Development in 1964? Castle. Yes. Who comes last in the list of seven names that begins with Bill Brewer and Jan Stewart in the Devon folk song Widdicombe Fair? Uh, Jimmy Brown. Tom Cobley. What grape is particularly associated with Australian red wine and is named after the city in Iran where the grape was thought to have originated? Syrah? Yes, Shiraz. The name of a former county of Western Scotland is preserved in the ducal title of the head of Clan Campbell, whose ancestral home is Inverary Castle. Which county? Argyll. Yes. Leskanich is the surname of the singer who won the 1997 Eurovision Song Contest for Britain, backed by the Waves. What's her first name? Katrina. Yes. What family of seabirds includes a species with the prefix wandering that has one of the largest wingspans of any bird? Albatross. Yes. Benedict Cumberbatch plays the title role in a 2018 television series series based on the acclaimed novels by Edward St. Aubin. Which series? Doctor Strange. Patrick Melrose. The congressional record is the nearest American equivalent of an official British parliamentary publication. What publication? Hansard. Is correct. Mark, you have a total now of 26 points. <laughs> yeah. And now Hamish again, please. And, Hamish, you start out with 13 points. The score to beat, as you have just heard, is 26. Let's see how you do with your general knowledge. Here we go. What part of the human body is affected by an irregularity called astigmatism? Yeah, I... Yep. Who resigned as Labour leader in April 1992, shortly after his party was defeated in the general election? Michael Foote. Neil Kinnock. What subatomic particle, a constituent of every atomic nucleus except hydrogen-1, was discovered by the English physicist James Chadwick? Neutron. Yep. In what year did the general strike take place in Great Britain? 1926. Yes. Who directed the 2018 film Peterloo about the offence in 1819 where the local yeomanry attacked a peaceful reform meeting in Manchester? Us. What is fermented to make the salty Thai sauce known as Nam Pla? Pass. What specific name was given to the rocket-powered missile developed by Werner von Braun that bombarded Allied targets from September 1944 onward? V2. Yes. Changeling is the first book in the Order of Darkness series for young adults by an author best known for her novels set in the Tudor period. What's her name? Pass. What was the Duke of Wellington's reputed reply when one of his mistresses threatened to make details of their affair public? Publish and be done. Yes. Which piano sonata did Beethoven dedicate to Countess Giulietta Guicardi, with whom some say he had fallen in love? Moonlight. Yes. In the title of a Chekhov play, how are Olga, Masha and Irina, the daughters of an army officer, known? Three sisters. Yes. The name of what common rockery plant with heads of white, pink or purple flowers comes partly from an old name for Iraklion, the capital of Crete, and for the island itself? Jenai. Candy Tuft. Which city in eastern England was an important town in Roman times and stood at the junction of Foss Way with Ermine Street? Norwich. Lincoln. The mainland of which northern European country is over 1,080 miles long and is no wider than 250 miles? 
Liechtenstein? Norway. In the 1950s, the British musician Eddie Calvert was known as the man with the golden... Trumpet. Yes. In a 2018 television adaptation of a Shakespeare play, the tragic title character was played by Anthony Hopkins. Which play? Hamlet. King Lear. Which country won the Women's Hockey World Cup in August 2018 by beating Ireland 6-0? Netherlands? Yes. What name that means youth style is given to the German Art Nouveau movement that had its origins in Munich in the mid-1890s? Bass. Which American civil rights leader had the original Christian name Michael? His father changed his own name and that of his son in honour of a German Protestant reformer. Mr. Martin Luther. Martin Luther King, yeah. In the Bible, who was the mother of King Solomon? She was one of the wives of King David. Bathsheba. Is correct. You had uh, four passes, Hamish. Jugendstil, the name that means youth style, given to the German Art Nouveau movement. Philippa Gregory was the author, Changeling, etc. The dish known as Nam Pla is made from fermented fish. And Mike Lee directed Peterloo. Hamish, four passes. You have a total now of 24 points. And now, Ian, again, please. And, Ian, you start out with 14 points. The score to beat, as we speak, is still 26. So, let's see if you can do it. Here we go. In August 1875, Captain Matthew Webb became the first person to swim across what stretch of water? English Channel. Yes. William Herschel discovered a planet he called Georgium Sidus in honour of King George III, the reigning monarch at the time of its discovery. Which planet? Uranus. Uranus, yeah. In what film, based on a Stephen King novel, are the lives of guards on death row affected by one of their charges, a huge man who has the gift of healing? Green Mile. Yes. The town of Hay on Wye is renowned for shops selling second-hand what? Books. Yep. Which European country has been ruled by members of the House of Saxe Coburg since 1831? King Philippe Leopold is the current ruler. Belgium. Yes. The 1918 Representation of the People Act gave women the right to vote provided they or their husbands met a certain property qualification and were over a certain age. What age? 30. Yes. Which veteran journalist who helped expose the Watergate scandal wrote the book Fear, Trump in the White House that was first published in 2018? Redford. Bob Woodward. In 2018, a bridge that Prince Charles had opened in 1996 was officially renamed after him. This was the second motorway bridge over which river? Uh, the Seven. Yes. What term for an adult female swine also applies to other animals, such as the bear? Sow. Yes. Who was Queen Elizabeth I's chief spymaster until his death in 1590? Working with William Cecil, he uncovered conspiracies such as the Babington and Ridolfi plots. Ramlingham. Walsingham. What preparation traditionally made from the stomach of a suckling calf or kid is used to curdle milk as the first stage in cheese making? Rennet. Yes. What name is given to the pattern of intricate stonework in the upper part of windows found specially in Gothic architecture? Pass. Which de Havilland aircraft was the world's first commercial jet airliner? The Cobbett. Yes. What title has been given to the imam of the Nizari Ismaili sect of Shiite Muslims since 1818? Aga Khan. Yes. Jonah Barrington was a leading British player in what racket sport he won the British Open Championship six times between 1967 and 73? Squash. Yes. Which American singer's only UK chart-topping single as a solo artist was Hello in 1984? Arnold Ritchie. Yes. Who provides the voiceover for the older Jennifer Wood? which starts each episode of Call the Midwife. Pass. Who composed the incidental music for Fonchesi's play Rosamunda, first performed in Vienna in 1823? Strauss. Schubert. What name for the device that measures distance travelled, often incorporated into a car speedometer, comes from the Greek for weigh and measure? Tachometer. Close odometer. You had uh, two passes. Vanessa Redgray provides that uh, the voiceover in Call the Midwife. And tracery is the name given to that to intricate stonework. However, Ian, you have now a total of 27 points. <laughs> and now Helen again, please. And uh, you also start this round with 14 points, Helen, but the difference is that 27 is now the score to beat. Let's see if you can do it. Here we go. 
What letter equivalent of the Roman letter B is the second letter of the Greek alphabet? Beta. Yep. The boundary between Switzerland and which other country passes through the middle of Lake Geneva? Germany. France. Which West Yorkshire town on Hebblebrook was famous for the manufacture of cloth and confectionery and later for its banking and financial services? Pontefract. No, Halifax. What is the name of the title character of a 2008 film about a man who ages backwards? He was created in a short story by F. Scott Fitzgerald and is played in the film by Brad Pitt. Benjamin Button. Yes. Which composer's body was buried in the Père Lachaise Cemetery in 1849 without the heart that was later placed in the Church of the Holy Cross in Warsaw? Berlioz. Chopin. What name is given to a coil of wire in the form of a long cylinder that acts as an electromagnet? Pass. Who had their first UK top ten single with Homeward Bound in May 1966? Simon and Garfunkel. Yes. What strong flavoured salad vegetable is varieties called Early Scarlet Globe, French Breakfast and White Icicle? Chicory. Radish. What game of Chinese origin played with tiles similar to dominoes was popularised in the West in the 1920s by Joseph P. Babcock? Ma Zhong. Yes. What regnal name was common to two of the four empresses who ruled Russia during the 18th century? Great. Catherine. Which figure in Greek mythology has a name that means all gifts? Multi... -fuss. Pandora. The pika, a small animal found in the mountains of North America and Central Asia, is a close relative of a mammal found wild in Britain. What animal? Rabbit. Yep. Yeah. What term for favouritism shown to relatives by those with power comes from the practice of popes and other church dignitaries of favouring nephews when conferring offices? Nepotism. Yes. In which 1970s television comedy series did Richard O'Sullivan play Robin Tripp, who shared an Earl's Court flat with Chrissy and Joe? Man About the House. Yep. In the 1844 poem No by Thomas Hood, what month of the year did he describe with no sun, no moon, no morn, no noon, no dawn, no dusk, no proper time of day? November. Yes. In October 2018, which author became the first Northern Irish writer to win the Man Booker Prize with the novel Milkman? Seamus Heaney. Anna Burns. Which newspaper cartoonist is commemorated in his hometown of Ipswich with a statue that features a giant version of his creation grandma? Andy Cap. Giles. The Shona and the Underbele are the main ethnic groups of which southern African country? Swaziland. Zimbabwe. Which footballer was sent off less than one minute after he came on as an 18-year-old substitute on his senior debut for the Argentine national team in 2005? Maradona. Messi. In June 2007, the MP Jackie Smith became the first woman to be appointed to what senior office of state? Home Secretary. Is correct. You had one pass. The name given to a coil of wire in the form of a long cylinder that acts as an electromagnet is a solenoid. You have scored, Helen, a total of 23 points. And finally, Judith, again, please. And Judith, as if you didn't know, you start out with 15 points, and I'm sure you also know the score to beat if you are to become the nation's next mastermind is 27. So, let's see if you can do it in two and a half minutes, starting now. What name did Robinson Crusoe give to the man he rescued from cannibals in the book about his adventures by Daniel Defoe? Friday. Yep. What is the common name of the relics from the Parthenon that were acquired in the early 19th century by the British ambassador to the Ottoman Empire? They're now in the British Museum. Elgin Marbles. Yes. Which multi-award winning Canadian author began her literary career writing poetry before she turned to novels with The Edible Woman, first published in 1969? Margaret Atwood? Yes, the title of what James Bond film completes the quotation from A.E. Houseman's A Shropshire Lad, but since the man that runs away lives to... Die another day. Yes, who is Britain's most successful female Olympian with a total of four cycling gold medals that she won in London in 2012 and Rio 2016? Laura Trott. Laura Kenny, Laura Trott, yes. The mineral iron pyrites, also known as fool's gold, is a compound of iron and which other element? Silicon. Salter. Which former member of Roxy Music released an album of 1920s and 30s classics called As Time Goes By in 1999? Brian Ferry. Yes. Who returned to Plymouth Harbour on the 28th of May 1967, having completed a solo circumnavigation of the world in his yacht Gypsy Moth 4? Francis Chichester. Yes. The brandy sour cocktails considered the national drink of which Mediterranean island? Mallorca. Cyprus. Worcestershire Beacon is the highest point of what range of hills? Mulverns. Yes. Which pianist and humorist who was born in Denmark in 1909 was best known for his comedy sketches that combine classical music and narrative? 
Hoffnung? Victor Borger. King Charles I was executed on the 30th of January 1649 on a scaffold built outside the banqueting house of what former royal palace? Whitehall. Yes, which 19th century novelist created the villain Count Isidora Ottavio Baldassore Fosco? Wilkie Collins. Yes, who is the Roman goddess of handicrafts and the art? She is the counterpart of the Greek goddess Athene. Minerva. Yes, in 1905, Count Sergei Vita became the first constitutional prime minister of what country? Czechoslovakia. Russia. What word that comes from the Latin for foster child and nourish refers to the graduates of a university or similar institution, particularly in America? Sophomore. No, alumni. Which city, the capital of the German state of Saxony, gives its name to fine china that was once manufactured there? Dresden. Yes, in which 2018 television drama series does Sarah Lancashire play a social worker caught up in a police investigation when a nine-year-old girl goes missing on an unsupervised visit? Pass. What long-tailed rodent was adopted as the symbol of the 7th Armoured Division who fought in North Africa in the Second World War and were known as the Desert Rats? A gerbo. Yes. Then that last answer was... Quite important, really, because you now have a total of 28 points. <laughs> you are the Mastermind Champion. <laughs> well, in fact, if that was a nail-biter, I don't know what was. Let's have a look at all of those scores. Joint fifth place, 23 points apiece, Dave and Helen. Fourth place, 24 points, Hamish. Third place, 26 points, Mark. Second place, 27 points, Ian. First place, 28 points, Judith. Congratulations. Oh, a wonderful thing. Wonderful. That, <laughs> that right down to that last question. Did, <laughs> did you know you had done it? I, I was hopeful. Yeah, but surprised. You looked a bit surprised. Oh, I was. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Yeah. Anyway, it was a brilliant contest, and you've got a beautiful bowl to show. But where are you going to put it? Somewhere the cats can't knock it over. <laughs> <laughs> very, very sensible. Judith, Mastermind Champion 2019. Congratulations. <laughs> and Judith is our winner, but the search will start again later this year to find the next Mastermind. And if that could be you, then do visit us online at bbc.co.uk stroke mastermind and you can follow us on Twitter at Mastermind Quiz and do join us next time for more Masterminds. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>